Okay, uh, today I'm going to be restoring the finish to the top flat of this revolver. As you know, I've been polishing it up, and sometimes when you're polishing it up, you get spots on the top of the revolver. Uh, you get places on it that you don't want that are shiny now that shouldn't be shiny. You don't want your top shiny. You don't want the flats up here shiny because you don't want to be trying to get a sight picture and have glare or reflection. So you need to have those kept flat. Now I don't know if you can see here, but this has some finishing flaws in the top strap here. There's some lines in that that should have been removed at the factory. The person responsible for finishing this gun before it left the factory should have taken care of that, but they didn't. So I'm going to take care of that first before I restore the flat top to the gun. Okay, since we want to restore that flat right there, the first thing we're going to go back to is our oiled piece of 320 grit sandpaper on a flat, wrapped around a piece of flat wood, and we're going to sand out that mark. We'll just keep doing this backwards and forth until that mark is gone. You can sand across the grain if you want, but make sure to finish by going with the grain. And I'll do that in this spot and this spot until that is gone. Okay, now I have that sanded out to my satisfaction. Now this is where you need to know when to stop. Because if you look there, you can still see a little bit of the line. It's not actually there anymore. If you run your finger across, it's totally smooth before you can feel the ridges. That's just the surface of the steel holding on to a little bit of the color from the sanding. Uh, once you bead blast that out, that will completely disappear. As you'll see at the end product here, you won't see that anymore. So you got to know when to stop and not overwork the finish. Remember, your goal wasn't to remove any size from this. It was just to take off that little ridge. So you just wanted to lightly sand until that ridge faded away enough that it wouldn't be noticeable once it was a matte finish. You don't want to take away any height of the site or anything. So we're to that point now where I'm ready to start taping it off and uh, get, re get ready to sandblast it or bead blast it. Okay, it is now taped up. Now this look, may look like a little bit of overkill to some people, but if you've ever used a bead blaster or a sand blaster before, you'll know it tends to get in anywhere it can get in. So you want to really mummify this thing, get it really taped up. You'll still have to clean it out a little bit when you're done, but you don't want any more getting in than necessary. So now that it is all taped up, we will be able to move outside and get ready to bead blast the top. Okay, now that we're outside, we're going to need a couple of things. First of which is my little pancake compressor here. Most people have these in their garage. If you don't, they're pretty cheap. You can pick them up at uh, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's. I think they even sell these sometimes at Walmart. So pick one of these up pretty cheap. You do need one of these for any time you go do sandblasting or bead blasting, but these little pancake ones are actually enough to do the sandblasting. As long as you can get, you know, 100 pounds of pressure out of it, you're, you're fine. You need a bead blaster or a, ma a media blaster. Uh, just a sand blaster here. This is just a little cheapie I bought for, I think it was like $14 at Harbor Freight. I used to have one that I paid like $9 for at Home Depot that I liked better, but it broke the cord on it, or broke the hose on it. It was a hose feed. This one's actually a little bucket feed, but uh, works really well, really cheap, so you don't have to spend a lot of money to be able to do this. Okay, next, you're actually going to need your abrasive that you're going to use. I use an 80 grit glass bead. I bought this at Harbor Freight. It's very cheap for a big bucket here, about a 25 pound bucket. Uh, it's a jug actually. But uh, this is made for ideal on softer metals. But on stainless steel it gives it a nice satin sheen without actually removing much metal. You're actually talking in microns here. So it's perfect to use on as a stainless steel for resurfacing it. Uh, this, like I say, was very inexpensive. I don't recover my abrasive at all, and this bucket lasts me forever. I've had this bucket for probably about a year now, and I've done probably 40 or 50 guns with it. I still have a third of the bucket left. Okay, uh, this stuff is pretty nasty, so you do want to wear a breather and some eye protection. You don't want to breathe this stuff in. It's pretty nasty, and it will bounce back and hit you in the face. So better be safe if you don't want to breathe this stuff. Now, you can barely hear me now because I got the mask on. But now that I got it, I'm going to give it some blast with the bee blaster. You'll probably hear the compressor kick on in the background. see even though it was all taped up some sand got in it so what we do next is we just blow it out
Okay, it's working pretty smooth. Doesn't feel like there's any grit in the mechanism, so I don't need to take the side plate off. Uh, if I hadn't taped it up well enough and it had gotten into the mechanisms, uh, I would have had to take the side plate off, spray it down with oil inside, then, ho then uh, air hose it out to get everything out of there. But it feels fine. Doesn't feel like there's any grit in there or anything. So it should be ready to just clean up and get ready to go now. Okay, I probably wouldn't stop yet, but I just wanted to show you how it's coming along. As you can see, it's looking pretty good on top there. There's probably a little more I could do, but I wanted to stop right now to tell you, show you how you always stop in stages, and you always want to stop before you've done everything you need to do, not at, when you've done too much. So uh, that's about where I want it. As you can see, it gives it a nice satiny finish. I don't know if you can see that there on camera. I'm hoping you can. When you look down the barrel here, you're not getting any reflection off the top. See how you're just getting a nice satin sheen off the top? No, not any of like that. That's what you would get with that side. But with the top here, you're just getting a nice smooth line to look down. Once, that's, Like I said, you always want to stop with a little bit more work to do. You never want to stop after you've done a little bit too much work. That's the fine line there. So uh, I may just leave this the way it is. I don't think that's enough to bother me now like it was before. So now I just got to clean the gun up, get it back to where it was and I'll be ready to go. So uh, that's the process. You can see how easy it is to do with some very minor tools. You don't need a whole lot. You, can't, you can spend a little bit of money and you can do a lot of guns with it. So, uh, and that's the process. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been the Yankee Marshal.